So going to Papua New Guinea and actually seeing these tea bushes in situ, they're just amazing. But can we have a chat about how those leaves become the final product that we had a cup of tea of? Absolutely, it's a, it's a long process as you saw, getting that lovely luscious green leaf to a black leaf at the end. And in some ways, it's similar to coffee. It's got to go through a journey in the country of, of origin, in the producing country, and then it's going to go in a ship and go to the, to the drinking country, consuming country. But all the best teas in the world, generally, and it's different to how we saw it in Papua New Guinea, are hand plucked. But in hand plucking the leaves off a bush, so the top two leaves in a bud generally, or the top three leaves in a bud and a little bit of stalk off the bush, that's where all the goodness is. Increasingly around the world, and we saw this in New Guinea, um, pluckers or the, the, the workforce in the fields are using handheld shears or I can't remember the name of the machine we used, but we tried it. It wasn't that easy. But yeah, electric hedge trimmer. Electric, a bit like an electric hedge trimmer to, to trim the leaves off. And I think they're becoming increasingly more sophisticated and giving pretty good quality results overall. But the really, really fine teas of the world, like Darjeeling in India or the top quality Salon teas, those will still be hand plucked for many years to come, I believe, because that standard of plucking is really important. And the guys that work in the fields, as opposed to the guys that work in the factory, and we'll talk about that in a minute, they will always say, our job out in the plantation, in the fields, is to preserve the quality of those green leaves the best we can. And if the factory guys muck it up, then that's their problem. But that's what our job is in the field. So the first part of the journey for the tea leaf is to, to be plucked gently off the tea bush. And then we went along a windy road and it was it a withering tray a withering table close it's a withering trough we generally <laughs> call it so the idea is really to get the green leaf that you've plucked either hand plucked and in your in your basket or your little rucksacks get it to the factory as quickly as possible and that again is about preserving the quality and the long withering troughs that we saw the idea is you spread the leaf out, maybe six inches deep or so, pass ambient air underneath it, gently blow warm air over the leaf. And the idea of that is to reduce the moisture content of the leaf, say from 70 or 80 percent. Now, when we were in New Guinea, it was reasonably hot, so the leaf was quite dry, so you probably didn't need to wither it for that long. But if you imagine India at the moment, in the middle of monsoons, the leaf is going to be really, really wet, so they probably need to dry it or wither it for longer. And you need to wither that um, moisture content down to about 30% in order to get the leaf ready to be rolled or cut or processed or made into the shape that, 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 that they want. So that rolled and cut and shape, how does that happen? Does it just carry on a little course? Is it moved by a conveyor belt and just goes on its merry way or does it start and stop? Well there's a number of different ways once you've, once you've dried the green leaf and it really depends on the country of origin uh, or the style of tea that you're trying to make. So for instance uh, where we were in Papua New Guinea we're making what's called CTC tea, tea that's really really suitable for stronger teas like English breakfasts and really really suitable for tea bags as well, infuses quickly. And in that case, the, um, the leaf is rolled very, very quickly against two rollers to create the style of leaf, the little small spherical leaves. If you were in Sri Lanka or parts of India, then they have a much gentler, more old fashioned rolling process for the leaf. And that creates those long, great black leaves that we saw when we were doing the tasting as well, and a much more delicate, delicate process. So, all the leaves are plucked and withered and then there's a number of different things that can happen to them. So is this where it either is black tea or green tea? Well that's a really really good question because all tea comes from the same bush, it's all from the camellia family and I guess not many people know that. Tea is from the camellia sinensis family, it was discovered in China 5,000 years ago and so it all comes from the same bush the only difference between black tea and green tea is the amount of time that you let the leaves oxidize or be exposed to air. So if you're making green tea, after you've withered and rolled or cut, 
then you will fire or steam the leaf and that's to stop the enzymes reacting with the air and that's to lock in the flavour and that's what makes green tea. If you want to make oolong tea or black tea, then after you've rolled or cut the leaf, the leaf is exposed to the atmosphere and it oxidises and that changes the colour of the leaf from green to oolong to brown to black. That process probably takes about an uh, hour and a half to two hours as opposed to the withering process, that drying process that can take up to 24 hours. Within another uh, seven days. So they will have to come here. What happens? With, uh, then again, you seven day you come to the beginning again. And again, you harvest within seven days this day. Every four years, we, we prune these bushes to keep it to their uh, chest, uh, below their chest level. So that easy for them to pluck. Now this is we call an oil field, which is ready for knife pruning. You prune it, leaving 22 inches from the ground. And This is really good because it shows you the top two leaves and the bud in the middle for the very, very finest teas. But as you move down and you've got larger leaf here, this is where also a lot of the flavour and the colour comes from. And actually I think Capilla, correct me if I'm wrong, but slightly more caffeine the further down you go as well. And when you're manufacturing the leaf, as, as we've seen in um, some of the factories that we've been to, the, it's the veins in the leaf that create some of the fibre in the tea and that's what gives the tea some of its character and colour and the stalk here also adds some character and characteristics to the tea. So when we're creating tea we often talk about the top two leaves and the bud and sure that's where the concentration of the flavour is but the whole of the the tea leaf that's plucked adds something uh, to, to that particular batch of tea and is used.
still in the dryer are the inlet temperatures and the outlet temperatures. Too hot will shock the leaf and burn it, and too cool it won't fire properly. tea plucking. Two leaves and a bud and inside inside the bud at the top if we take that off there's a little tip. This is where I wish I had some nails actually. And that tip is called the silver needle tip and that's the basis the basis of white tea. So inside the protective bud. Sun dry, but it's raining outside as you can see, absolutely hosing down. So this silver tips white tea is being dried in the tasting room or close to the dryers where it's warm. And this will take maybe two weeks to dry, it's extraordinary. You want to keep that lovely white, uh, light green colour and not damage the leaf in any way. And one of the things that I didn't realise, and I've been in the business a long time now, was that um, these leaves are specially made for white tea and they're not processed in any way at all. They are plucked off the bush and then they naturally, naturally curl whilst they're drying. It's phenomenal and that's why they say it's the least processed tea in the world because all you have to do is just take the leaf off the bush and then leave it and that's it.